Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to discuss the concept of weather, what the definition of weather is, how to determine weather and what the different aspects of weather are. So what is the definition? Well, weather refers to the general atmospheric conditions over a short period of time. The short period of time can be anything from a few hours to up to a week or so. General atmospheric conditions refers to what is going on in the air around us and the sky above us in terms of four aspects, temperature, precipitation, wind, and humidity. Now let's analyze what each of these terms means. Temperature. Temperature refers to how hot or cold something is. In the case of weather, we are talking about how hot or cold the air is. Temperature is measured using an instrument called a thermometer and is calculated using either degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, depending on if you are using the metric or imperial system. Typically, the highest temperatures are likely to occur between noon and 2 p.m. and the lowest temperatures will occur just before dawn. Precipitation. Precipitation refers to any form of water that can reach the ground from the atmosphere. Precipitation that affects weather the most comes in three main types, rain, hail and snow. Precipitation can also occur in the form of frost and dew, but we won't be discussing those in this video. Rain is the most common type of precipitation around the world and is vital to every component of life on Earth. The amount of rain a place receives is measured in millimeters or inches depending on where in the world you are. The amount of rainfall a place experiences varies depending on where in the world each place is. Some places, like the Namib Desert in southwestern Africa, get extremely low levels of rainfall, less than 100 millimeters in an entire year, while other places, like Crop River in New Zealand, get an average of over 10,000 millimeters of rainfall in a year. Crop River is one of the wettest places on Earth. The global average for rainfall is about a thousand millimeters per year. Hail. Hail is a frozen raindrop that forms in massive thunderstorm clouds called cumulonimbus clouds. Inside these clouds, condensed raindrops are churned by extremely strong winds that create what is called an updraft. As the raindrop falls through the cloud, these updraft winds blow strong enough to cause the raindrop to rise back up into the cloud. If the raindrop is blown high enough, it reaches a height where it starts to freeze. This is called the freezing level. The frozen raindrop is now at the core of the hailstone. The updraft winds get weaker with height, and eventually the hailstone gets too heavy for the wind to keep the stone in the air. The hailstone then starts to fall through the cloud again, and if the updrafts are strong enough again near the bottom of the cloud, the hailstone may once again be forced to rise up through the cloud again. As it rises, more water condenses around the stone and causes the stone to grow in size and effectively gather a layer. If you find a hailstone that's big enough, you can actually break it open and see the layers inside. Snow. Where hail and rain form through the processes of condensation and freezing by changing from gas to liquid to solid, snow forms through the process of deposition or desublimation, where water vapor changes directly to solid frozen water, skipping the liquid phase. Small ice crystals form when water vapor freezes around dust or pollen particles in the air. This creates the snowflake. Snow is more common the further from the equator you go. Humidity. Humidity refers to the amount of water vapor that is present in the air. Air at any temperature can only hold a certain amount of water vapor, and the higher the air temperature, the more water vapor it can hold. Therefore, it makes sense that if you live in a place where it is extremely humid, it's pretty likely that it's extremely hot as well. A good indicator of how humid the air is, is to have an ice cold drink. The longer the surface of the glass holding your refreshing beverages in contact with the air, the more likely it is that some of the water vapor in the air will condense on the surface. The higher the humidity is, the longer the condensation will happen. If little or no condensation occurs, the air is extremely dry, or your drink isn't cold enough. Wind. When air heats, it rises because it becomes less dense. 
when air cools, it sinks because it becomes more dense. As the heated air rises, it creates an area of low atmospheric pressure. And conversely, the sinking air creates an area of high atmospheric pressure. As the air around a low pressure area rises, air from other regions needs to move in to replace it. And this air comes from areas of high pressure. This flow of air is what creates wind. Winds can often change weather quite quickly, as air blowing from high pressure regions is usually dry and cool, with very few clouds. Winds over low pressure areas often bring warmer, moister air and often leads to precipitation. If you look at the sky outside and feel very little wind and see no clouds, it is likely that you are under an area of high pressure. If you see thick clouds, you are likely standing under a region of low pressure. Now, let's analyze a couple of pictures to see if we understand how to identify weather based on what we've learned in this lesson. Right, from the first picture, how can you describe the weather based on the temperature, precipitation, wind, and humidity? Now, the temperature looks cold. People are wearing long clothes, warm clothes, thick clothes. There's also snow, which covers the precipitation. And as a result, it's snowing. It's probably cold as well. Wind, well, it looks like the snowflakes are swirling all over the place. Might be some sort of snowstorm. Right, so it's very possible that there is some wind. Humidity is a tricky no. one. Right? There is likely to be humidity because of the way that snow forms. But it's not going to be as humid as, say, a tropical region. But humidity is difficult to understand or assess if you're not actually experiencing it. The second picture, in contrast to the first picture, is very different. The weather is basically the polar opposite. It looks a lot warmer. There's a lot more sunshine, blue skies. In terms of precipitation, no clouds in the sky. There's no snow, there's no rain, no hail. Wind, more difficult to see, but if we apply our understanding of how wind is formed and pressure regions work, You'll notice that there are no clouds in the sky, which means it is likely that this area is experiencing an area of high pressure. High pressure areas do not have many wind and are also quite dry, which answers the question of humidity as well. Therefore, it's likely to be quite dry. The lack of clouds in the sky also leads one to believe that humidity is low. If there's lots of water vapor in the air, you could probably expect that water vapor to condense into clouds at some point. Let's quickly summarize what we've covered in this video. We've gone through the definition of weather, being the general atmospheric conditions over a short period of time, about a day, a few hours. We have gone over the four aspects of weather, temperature, wind, precipitation, and humidity. And we've identified weather in some photographs. That brings us to the end of this video. I'd like to thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it educational.